demo I'm going to do today is a splashing wave in watercolour. So it's a big splash wave. And I'm going to be doing rocks with a, a credit card. It's something along the lines, let me just grab this and show you, something along the lines of this, which I hope you can see. I'm going to be using a mixture of SAA watercolours and Shinhan watercolours. I'm going to turn the camera around in a second because obviously it's not about me, it's about what you can see me doing. So I'll turn the camera around. Right, okay, so what I've got here. The paper I'm using here is um, a Bockingford and it's a £140 knot. This is the, the paper I'm using and I'll put a link to these in the um, notes at the end, the comments afterwards. This one is an eighth imperial. I'm using a quarter imperial here uh, and it's a £140 knot. That's the, um, the weight of the paper. Now the weight means if you have anything of £90 or less, then you tend to need to stretch the paper. If it's £140 or over, then you don't tend to need to stretch the paper. And the surface I'm using is this one called Knot. It's really difficult to see on the screen, but it's a, a medium texture. Uh, you've usually got hot pressed paper, which is very smooth, which is fantastic for things like botanical drawings, etc. Uh, you've got rough paper, which gives you exactly what it says. It's, it's a rough surface, so it gives you uh, plenty of texture on the surface. And then this one is called Knot, and it literally means it's not hot pressed and it's not rough. So it's, it's a medium texture somewhere in between the two. And this is the rest of the equipment that I'm, I'm going to be using. I've got a very limited um, palette of colours here. I've got an ultramarine and a marine blue, which is a bit like an intense blue or a thallo, depending on, on which brand that you use. Those are Shinhan ones. I've got a burnt umber. I'm going to use a little bit of silver, the SAA silver, which is a fantastic watercolour, which gives uh, a really good little bit of sparkle and some yellow ochre. I've got a palette knife. I'm probably not going to use this, but you can use this instead of the credit card if you don't want to use a piece of your credit card. It's just an alternative. So I've got this piece of credit card and I've cut it into this shape. So I've got a small edge and a big edge and I'll show you how I'm going to use those later on. Um, I've got a pencil. I will draw a little bit, but it's not very much. So let's get started. This is a really rapid um, demonstration. So all I'm going to draw in is a rough shape of where my edge of my rocks is going to go. And I quite often wouldn't even draw that in at all either, but uh, it's just a very faint line that I've got here just to show me where my rocks are going to come to. So this is where my land is going to be, the splash is here and the sea is going to be behind it. So let's take my big brush. I'm just wetting my brush and I'm just going to put a little bit of water down where my C is going to be. And I'm going to paint around where that wave is. This just gives me a little more time to work. So when I'm, I'm working with the colours on there, I haven't drawn that edge because if you draw it, it tends to be visible through the edge of the splash. Um, and that becomes, it, you can rub it out, but sometimes it just leaves a mark. So I prefer just to draw that line. So I've just drawn that line along there with water. So I've got my rays of the splash here. I might just lift a little out there. So I'm going to take my ultramarine and a little bit of my marine blue. And I'm also going to put a touch of my brown in there. And that just darkens it down. So I want this really, really strong colour. So let's just bring this across, adding a little bit of the different blues in at different times. The marine blue coming in here. I'm picking up a touch of my burnt umber, just making things a little darker. Going to lift a 
suggestion of a few crests back here just using I call it a, it's, it's a thirsty brush so if you wash your brush and dry it with the cloth and then just lift we get that now before this edge dries I need to uh, soften that edge down to make it look like a foamy edge so again what I've done is I've just wet my brush and dried it off on my cloth and I'm pushing the water back up into my colour. Now, if you do it the other way, as I quite often see people try and pull that down, it just pulls the colour down. So what I want you to do is have just water on the white paper and push that up into where you've painted. And can you see that gives you a lovely soft edge to your wave and just wetting the paper down like I did at the beginning just gives you a little bit more time to play with I often do this without wetting the paper um, but it's it's quite a rapid um, process then I'm just going to come back in with a bit more dark here my paper is still very wet so I can Put this in without worrying okay now I want to have a little bit of splash going along in um, along the edge of that foam and there's lots and lots and lots of different ways of doing this one of the ways you can do it is with salt so I know a lot of you um, have used salt before um, and you just sprinkle the salt along the edge and it absorbs some of the colour. But I'm quite a lazy painter um, and if you put the salt down you have to wait for it to dry before you brush it off and move. So what I'm going to do here is just dip my fingers into my water pot and just flick. Okay and in a second you'll start to see that develop there's little splashes coming up here because what I've done is I've diluted the paint. I might do that again in a minute once some of this colour has dried up a bit. It's still a little bit wet at the minute so I might repeat that one and I am, I just want to keep adding more colour to this. So my two blues and my brown I just want to bring in right behind this wave Is it okay that we're allowed to play on a Saturday afternoon? There we go, just making that a little bit darker. Just make sure that that edge is still soft, which it is. I'm going to allow that to dry and then I'm going to do a little bit more of my, my flicking. So I've got this colour left on my palette, it's the same colour I've just put down, it's the two blues and the brown. And I'm going to put in some shadow underneath my waves next. So this is the shadow under the waves as they break against the shore. Um, but what I'm going to do is put the colour in and then take it out again. So you have to only do as much as you can take out again before it dries. So this is going on dry paper, so I'm putting this in just in the way a splash might come up then I'm going to take my brush and again like I did before push some of this back down so I've got a soft edge to it I want a little bit more of that brighter blue in there let that roll around a little bit. What you have to be really careful of when you're doing this, and I'm just moving the paint around a little bit, is that you don't lose the white bit. Uh, if you put too much colour down it just then becomes a um, blue shape and you've lost that, that sort of brightness of that white. This is still very wet up here so I'm going to leave that for a minute. So under here we're going to have a little bit more of this shadow and 
again I'm taking this out I'm dripping water all over the place and it's good fun let's push you up a little bit there make that shape a little more random Pushing and pulling a little bit. Okay, so that's still quite wet up there, so I'm just going to leave that for a minute um, and come down to talking about the rocks. Now I'm going to put the rocks down and then I'm going to put the colour down of the rocks, and it's all going to be very, very dark. Then I'm going to use my credit card to scrape the light back out and what you have to think of is where would the light be hitting the rocks it's not just repeated little shapes it's not um, the rocks along the edge of the water are often quite flat they've got a surface to them so you've got to decide where the light is and where your shadows are going to be and obviously this is easier when you're actually sat at the at this coast looking at the rocks which I've done loads and loads and loads of times so um, we're going to put this down, scrape away, and this is where having either a not surface or a rough surface uh, is going to be to your advantage because what you will end up having is the surface gives you that rocky, rough, rough texture. So I'm going to take my brush. I need lots of paint for this. So I'm going to use my ultramarine and my umber and lots of it. When I say lots of it, I mean lots of it. Really dark, loads of paint. So by putting this mixture of blue and brown, I'm not mixing up enough in any one brushful, so the colours change. It's never, it's not a flat finish to it. Oh, I've just picked up a bit of the other blue as well. Never mind. Keep coming down. Now, as we come down to the bottom here, I'm just going to paint this, fade this away a little bit. Do I need any more paint on there? The reason I can get this amount of colour going on here is because I'm using tubes. And I'm going to do the scrapey thing in a minute, but then I'll stop and explain to you the difference between tubes and pans. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of this now. See if that's dry enough to work. And hopefully you can start to see that, that little edge breaking away as that dries off. Okay, so back to my credit card. Again, you have to do enough of this before the paint dries. You need to do it whilst the paint is still wet. So I'm just going to take the credit card and that's my rock. That's the light hitting my rock. Like I say, you'll often find these rocks are quite flat right on the coast. And they have these fissures through them, so I'm just dragging the paint back through to give me these dark lines. And this is something you're just going to have to practice, take my word for it, it does come but you have to practice the timing um, and how much pressure you put down on this. So we start to scrape away there. I'm just picking some paint up and dragging it through. You get those little cracks and things going along in, in rock surfaces. see here at the bottom, the very bottom, you can't really see where I'm scraping the rocks out so much. And that's why when you put the colour down up here, you need to have it dark. If you don't have it dark enough, it just doesn't show up. Again, cut back through. And all I'm doing here is just dragging some of that paint through to give me some darker, darker lines. There we go. Let's have. Now 
again with this I've cut myself a long side and I've got a short side so if you want to use have different shape and size areas then that's what those different cuts are for. So we've got our areas of rock, my little splashes, I think my background was just a little bit too wet when I put some of those splashes in still, but we have now the sea, the splash, the rock, and you can see the little textures that come along here, um, and that's all that surface of the paper um, that's giving you all of that, all of that texture. Um, I was going to tell you a little bit about pans and tubes. I often people see, see people saying, I'm about to start painting and I don't know whether to use pans or to whether to use tubes. Um, my recommendation personally, and it is personal, um, is to go for tubes. Now you can see in my palette here, I've got paint in the little wells. And when you put tube paint into a little well and allow it to go dry, it is just the same as a pan. This is incredibly difficult to do with pans because you simply can't pick up enough paint in the first instance to get that strength of colour. And by the time you've got enough colour, the bit that you started at has dried off, so it's very difficult. So if you get pan, uh, the tubes, you can use them like pans or you can use them like tubes. So you, to my money, you have the best of both worlds. Um, but that, again, it is an incredibly personal thing. Uh, I'm just going to take the silver brush and just use a little bit of this dark. Now this is beginning to dry back. Again, this is just reiterating a few of those little marks as it's drying. You can see some little places coming up. The shadows and cracks and crevices. Um, but I would be so careful that you don't overdo this, which I am apt to do because I enjoy this bit. This is just fiddling. This is having fun. Okay. So we have a splash. We have the sea. We have our rocks. I think I'm going to leave it there. It's a very short tutorial. But I'd love you to have a go. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a nice short and sweet tutorial, this one. Take care. Bye.